All right, so welcome to my channel, Aqua Splendor. My name is Nicole Marion, and I hope you're gonna have the time of your life by watching how to do your own dosing bottle. Uh, so this video is more like I'm gonna explain how to uh, DIY um, a dosing bottle for maybe your salt water, probably like for your salt water aquarium. If you're in fresh water, don't worry. Um, like I'm gonna, all everything that I'm gonna talk is still relevant also. Like I have this kind of stuff also. So this video is more like a um, um, reference, um, kind of like a guide. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to to help you to guide you. Uh, to build your own dosing bottle. So I'm gonna go step by step for what make the perfect dosing bottle, if it really exists. Also in the description of the video, I will put like the time step, so you can click on the stuff that you feel like relevant to you. So I hope like I'm gonna cover everything and this, this video will help you to guide you. Um, so let's go. Okay, the first thing that I want to say, um, when you go to the grocery store, Make sure to, to just watch uh, every kind of bottle that you think will fit in your uh, in the bottom of your aquarium, in your uh, sump uh, or in, in the, on the side, what, whatever. Uh, just I spent like seriously like over years by looking everywhere, everything I was like going to the grocery store. I was going like a Canadian tire because I live in Canada. Um, I was also always watching for the perfect bottle because I don't necessarily want to pay like a just for the bottle. Sometimes you pay for like a, a drink and the bottle come with it. So it's one way like to save money. Uh, so make sure like to, to go to your grocery store uh, and just watch. That's what I did for like over a year and I have accumulated so like many bottle everywhere during this year. Uh, I think I found the perfect bottle, almost, and uh, which makes not perfect. So there we go. So make sure to go to the grocery store, and you'll find whatever that you think uh, will fit for your needs. All right. So the first thing, uh, there is three different uh, type of bottle that I think are, are in the market. So the first one, which I don't have like uh, right now, but. Uh, sometimes I see some containers that are made of uh, aluminium and we know that aluminium is uh, like can be super toxic for the fish, for the corals, uh, whatnot, whatever. And uh, so if you see something is made in aluminium, like just skip it. It's not good for our needs and it will just cause some problem. Like just for example, I never use like that bottle that have like a the cap is made of aluminium and I can see already like some rusting uh, and it's garbage let's put that way the other uh, two other bottle that i have found is there's two tag you can find the classic let's say like this one uh, is a super cute um in in glass you can see like in scientific laboratory they use uh, the glass because the glass is inert it won't affect whatever that you put inside of the bottle it, it won't affect uh, any parameter so that's why i recommend if you, you try to find um, a bottle Try to find something in, in glass. If, however, uh, you can't find something like in glass that fit for your needs, you can find some like a plastic bottle. However, the plastic is made by different components and uh, it, some of them can be toxic over a period of time. And there is another thing that sometimes people I've seen in the past, they, they're not super careful. So when you use like, for example, the calcium, the calcium will have like a chemical uh, reaction in the water uh, and it will just eat the bottle. So if you have like a plastic bottle, you might uh, have the bottle that's gonna like just heat and you're gonna like shrink. Every plastic will leach over time something in the aquarium. It's, there's no uh, way around it. It will leach something toxic in the water. But it's so long that sometimes like it's, does it really matter? It's developable. I'm mean, saying that I, I've seen some people doing uh, when they choose like a, a bottle in plastic uh, and you mix it like with the calcium powder, like this. Like this. Um, this is the Red Sea, just for example. Uh, then what's happening is like the, the calcium, the powder uh, inside of this, with when you mix it with water, uh, you're gonna have like a chemical reaction and it will just super heat, it's gonna warm the bottle like at a very high temperature 
and it will shrink the bubble it may like break the bubble and you're gonna start to to leak or what is more important is every plastic when they are heated this is where the um, the, the plastic will leach whatever it's like they are made of will start to leach into the the water so make sure that any bottle in plastic that you you, you mix with make sure that you always have like a, the room temperature actually you know what I'm gonna do a demonstration like I'm gonna use some the powder and I'm gonna use uh, this bottle I'm gonna just check what it's made of PT1 okay perfect so I'm gonna show a perfect example what's happening if you if you mix those two together okay so this is the bottle I was talking about I uh, have the calcium powder and I have the water and the temperature of the water as I speak is at 24-ish degrees okay perfect so just for example put like that calcium and like everything that I'm going to use uh, for the calcium I'm gonna throw away after this because I'm not going to put something that's uh, gonna be like toxic for my crown so it's just an experimentation for for you guys so to avoid uh, this kind of accident so you're gonna see like it's pretty kind of actually it's kind of cool when you <laughs> you see the the chemical uh, reaction of this is or the thermal reaction whatever i'm sure that there's like scientific out there that will um, correct me uh, there's like super uh, precise time that you need to use all right so i think whew, Ooh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, all right, so I think this is enough. And uh, so now I will just put the water that is at uh, 24 uh, degrees. And that should be enough. So now it's time to mix it, the stuff together and you're gonna see like the the temperature is really different but I think I didn't put a lot of calcium in it so I think it's gonna just be fine it's not going like to crash the bottle so maybe that's <laughs> that's a bad reaction but I think you will you'll get the point and you can notice also the um, the red sea calcium um there's um not super clear there's like some brownish uh, something uh, not I don't know what they, they put inside but it's like um, just a residue of something I don't know what is it what it is all right so I will just put the thermometer and you can see it's at 35 degrees so since I didn't put like a lot of uh, calcium uh, it could have eaten way more than that but at 35 I'm guessing it's still okay ish but sometimes like, I've seen like some people that uh, have like like 70 degrees or like super high temperature and super super warm. So just make sure like to be careful with the when you mix the the calcium. Uh, so so there we go. This was a demonstration. All right. So um, I think I kind of failed my experiment. Um, but I think you get the point. Uh, sometimes if like when you put a lot of like calcium. Uh, it will react like really crazy you're gonna be like surprised but i hope you get the point and the reason actually i didn't want to put the cutscenes because I, I, I used this in my crown so i didn't want to uh, to waste it so by the way you can see like it's not like super clear um, it's not transparent there's like a brown ish so there we go for the for the plastics and uh, like i was saying the plastic have like different uh compound different like uh, type of compound in the plastic so uh, there's like seven categories some of them are more toxic than others so and i will say like which one is like more toxic and which way is, which one is like more um, safe so when you buy like um, a bottle of plastic you can see there's like a number uh, behind on the bottom it's like a recycle number so this number means what type of plastic is made of uh, so there are seven categories and the first one so this actually is number one is stand for it's saying this one so it's PT and the PT stand I'm gonna push her so I need I'm gonna put her the name so I'm I need to watch my, my notes so it's a polyethylene terephthalate I hope I pronounced uh, that correctly 
and often like this is like more, one of the i think it's the most common one to use uh, in the industry they use like for um the, the drink bottle and um so this one is actually toxic uh is there's there have been like some experiment with this one and the, the number one you have to avoid uh, this one all right so number two is uh, the hdpe it's the high density polyethylene and you can see like this is the ccam excel and just on the bottom of the bottle they have like the number two hdpe and uh, actually just for fun if they do their homework it should be two yes it's number two hdpe from the for the no, no box um so this one is uh, considered like safe i think it's from my opinion it's like the safest uh, plastic you can use for um, for dosing. Number three, the polyvinyl chloride, known as the PVC. We've heard this one. We use this one for aquarium. Uh, we use like for the the pipe mostly. Um, there's no. Uh, I have found any like a bottle made of uh, of PVC. The reason why is because it's one is like unsafe for food storage. Probably with uh, for drink also. I'm not quite sure how, 100%. Uh, but I couldn't find any bottle uh, made of uh, PVC, and uh, it's also used for uh, I think for like a ground the floor. They use uh, also a little bit of PVC. I will put in like in neutral category, uh, not like not super toxic, not super good, but it's just neutral and it's, uh, there's like the safe zone. I will put like this one is like in the middle. Number four. The low density polyethylene. Uh, I found I haven't found uh, any bottle also for uh, for dosing. Um, I think they use it for like a sandwich bag or uh, I think also like at our, our grocery store. The the bag that we they, they give you sometimes they are made of this. Um, if you have like a, the number four uh, bottle, um, I think it, from what I read, it seemed to be safe also so but it's harder to find number five is the polypropylene it's safe for the dishwasher because it resists like a high temperature uh, it's used like in a medicine bottle it's used actually for like yogurt uh, i just finally found one i was looking for somewhere in my all of my bottle none of them was uh, made it five but the yogurt one uh, was made of five and the number five is considered like safe for for our aquarium and number six is PS for polystyrene. Uh, it's also known for like the, the silver foam that we find like in, in the box. Uh, and like when you take out the, the silver foam, like it, it spread everywhere. Um, just avoid this one. Um, I'm not sure if this is like in silver foam, 100% sure, but um, like just for example, uh, it's also used for like, I think for like coffee cups and like a Starbucks and stuff like that. Um, I wouldn't say that one is like a safe, so if you can avoid it just avoid this one and it's also hard to find like in a bottle shape uh, form so it's kind of hard to define and for the last one is the number seven so this one is a little bit special uh it's any kind of plastic that doesn't fit in the first six categories so uh, which which means it can be safe and can be uh, toxic uh, you can't really tell uh, except if you ask uh, what it's made of like let's say it's made of like acrylic Generally it's accepted that in our um, hobby that the, the acrylic is safe for aquarium If there's aquarium made in acrylic, but let's say it's made like of a polycarbonate um, This can release like toxin for the, for the aquarium, for the fish, for the coral, anything so you can't really tell what is made of when you see like the number seven. So this, for example, is a, like a, the OXO bottle. Um, I've seen some people like use uh, this bottle. Unfortunately, I have no clue what it's made of. I can see like it's 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 the number seven and it's BPA free. Um, I can't know. I can't tell what it's like made of. Like that thing is made of, um, but. You can like some, I see some people which is super cool. Uh, they make like a, a hole and they use like um, a small quick connect uh, like this. And uh, it's just you use like inside of it. And you can just uh, put one to uh, on top of other, uh, which I think is uh, kind of cool, super smart. 
Uh, so, but I can't tell if it's safe or not. Uh, I've sent some email to the company, but I didn't have like any uh, real good answer for this. Uh, sometimes like uh, I go a little bit too deep in my question. I try my best to, to get uh, have uh, information for you guys. And also like uh, the number seven, like it, it can be like acrylic, it can be uh, uh, nylon, it can be uh, there was uh, the ABS. Uh, fiberglass and like anything any kind of plastic so it's hard to tell if it's safe or not um, I will say if you see like the number seven unless you know what it's made of specifically uh, I will say it's not safe for the aquarium Okay, so now let's talk about uh, the difference of size. Uh, this, this is like pretty much like the smallest one that I found. Uh, in French, we say Sanje. What's up, Sanje? If you watch this video, um, and the middle medium balance uh, bottle is like this one for one liter. And the biggest one I've seen some people use is the container, like a, that big. Which you can see is two HDPP. HDP. Um, if you, you're using like container like that size, uh, I think it's more efficient to use a cup presser or like a custom reactor um, because spending money like uh, for like the powder or for the liquid uh, is gonna cost like way more. So it's maybe like it's okay for you. I don't know. Like everyone you have like different taste, different uh, needs, and also you can see like this bottle is actually clear and this bottle is the container. Is actually opaque. Okay. Uh, there is some pros and cons between the, the two of each. So, so let's say like this one is actually also in glass, but it's uh, you can see it's like black. It's op opaque. The advantage I've seen um, when, when people like use like something like you can see the liquid inside uh, the the algae uh, or the organic stuff that can grow inside of the bowl uh, it won't grow. So this is one of the advantage. But the disadvantage I found, like when it's like you can't see uh, if your, your bottle is like empty or not, uh, that can cause a super huge issue for your aquarium. So I prefer to use like transparent bottle, and so you can see like the if the bottle is empty or not. The only thing that will say like just don't put your your bottle in front of the light, um, and other than that, I think like it's gonna be like this is pretty much fine. So this is for me the, my favorite size because uh, you have like it's one liter and uh, the reason why I like this size is because it, it empty like let's say maybe one month or after like three months. Once it's empty, I just clean the bottle with the air or DI water and like this I'm, I make sure that what what's inside is exactly what I'm going to dose. So I prefer to, to, to recycle or to reuse myself to clean the stuff and make sure like there is no... Um, residue of anything that sometimes like you can find like residue on the bottom so i just prefer this bottle so this is my recommendation one liter depending of your aquarium all right so now let's talk about the bottom of uh, each uh, bottle there is a reason um, why i prefer to have like a round shape it's because if you want to do like a you, you want to use like a steering uh, magnet and it will just like spin to spin the liquid, to mix the liquid uh, together, um, it will. It's just way better to have like a round shape like this. And by the way, this uh, all this kind of stuff, uh, I will cover this like in another video. But if you can find something that is round, like also like uh, this one is round, uh, the the deposit is more like a more even around the bowl. Uh, let's say like this is like a bad example. This is what I don't like. It's you have like the you can have like this kind of shape over there that the residue can accumulate and you can't really mix uh, correctly. So you can have like a more like big concentration of uh, of the whatever you're dosing. Uh, I want those little thing over there. So I I would recommend to not use uh, this kind of bottle. Uh, let's take an example. Uh, this is ketchup. Um, honestly. It's not super practical, but hey, uh, I'm not judging you. So another example, you know, sometimes I see some people that are using like this. So this is what's like a, a vinegar bottle. And um, you can see what is it? Number two HDP. So this is safe actually for dosing. 
uh, but it's not super practical but if like you have like a huge uh, amount of liquid uh, and you make sure that you mix your stuff correctly and it's like it's super uh, even in your but if you can find something that is more round shape i think it is a more um proof future proof uh thing for if you want to do like a uh, steering stuff like that i will say like this is pretty much like a um a mix between square and uh, round and uh, just avoid to have something that is like um, have like a sharp edge because sometimes like on the on the edge on the corner uh, this is where the the stuff start to grow to accumulate so having a round shape like like this one is like to like the, the best thing i think you can find another thing that i consider when i choose my bottle you can see there's like a different of height and this one is actually plastic what can happen actually it's exactly that uh, if the bottle is uh, empty you can have the risk of the bottle to fall down like this and you can have like an accident and the liquid will just drop so if you can find like something a bottle that is uh, in glass or like something that is like heavy uh, the chance that it will just like um, like fall down is pretty low so i prefer to have something uh, like this one is is like square so it won't fall down so this is something a little detail that i found like uh, it was practical because because i i in the past like dropped this bottle actually by accident and uh, this way i like uh, the shape of this one take something that is heavy and stable so now let's talk about uh, the caps of the bottle so this is the part that is is getting very interesting because it is where it gets a little bit more complicated so like like i showed like this one i like to have a cap that is like uh, or the entrance of this is like super big i can maybe put my hand and clean the inside super cool uh this one is like the entrance is like super small and the caps is actually made of metal so this like it's a no-go don't use this kind of stuff because uh, you're gonna see like uh, some rust uh, inside so Speaking of rust, uh, I have like this uh, this bottle, um, like I, I did some hole and I left the, the bottle uh, empty for a couple months just to show you like in the, in the video, uh, this is the residue of the metal like like you can see like the hole and over the time all the little part of the metal uh, can accumulate on the bottom of the bottle so this is why if you find something like you see you're like oh super beautiful uh, bottle but the problem is like uh, it's in metal and uh, the inside is covered of a... Uh, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it is, but once you, you drill inside of it, the, the metal will just spread. Maybe you can cover with like um, some silicone. Try to find something that is actually in uh, in plastic. Like just another example, another kind of like a bottle. Sometimes you have like a, the, the inside of the cap, they have like a some kind of like a plastic, I can't really remove it but there's like a plastic uh, however like the on the top is like in metal so all those things will just eventually like touch the water so it's not super safe and it's uh, like it's super annoying to um, to just do also this is like another example uh, I put like it in my community and I was just like testing some stuff uh, so this is like a no-go so all this stuff put away uh, this is like a compromise the the cap is super cool like it's anemia so like say oh yeah no go but however the the inside of it is uh, in the plastic and uh, the only issue that i have with that bottle is like it's i don't know like how much we have to drill the, the, like, the inside of this so but it's a really cool bottle uh, like i'm gonna put a link for, for this um the other one i've seen is like bottle the caps is like like this you can find actually some sorry some caps like this and uh let's say let's open it i think it's supposed to fit yeah it's fit so you can put your your lines like a quick connect so the plastic is my favorite actually um cap because it's more easy to to drill uh, it's more flexible another example i've seen like you see like the ketchup they have like a small hole so what you can do you can use a um like a straw in plastic like i have like two acrylic uh, tube so what you can do you can actually just literally put the tube like that and then cut it 
uh, and use like a air tube or whatever the, the way you, you connect. But I found it was like, hey, you know what? It's kind of interesting. So up to you, you can really like move that part. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. I like the the idea of it. Sometimes you can also like uh, recycle uh, some old bottle, and there's like you can see like this kind of cap. So you can maybe like just remove the top. So this is like a little trick if you have something at home that uh, look kind of look like this. So my favorite one is also like the, the caps like that. Something like it's uh, very easy, uh, accessible to uh, to drill. Like my favorite one is actually the, the boss cap. Um, it's like it's large and uh, there's like a space you can just remove uh, that part. So this is like one of the my dosing bottle. Um, like my favorite combination is like to find something like this in glass and having the the caps in plastic. Uh, actually, the cool story about it is like the um, the caps is wasn't made for that uh, particular uh, glass. So what I did is like I was trying to find like the the perfect like bottle in in glass. Then I I just try to like take some caps in plastic and. It see like if it fit until I find something that fit uh, on top. If you want to recycle, just keep the the caps just in case. And because like like that's an example for this one. Um, I I really enjoy uh, the shape of this one. It looks so uh, fancy. And the problem is like to find the, the caps for that size. I already found the the right plastic uh, caps for this one. When you actually uh, do the hole uh, inside of the the caps. Make sure you have a. Um, make sure you have like a little hole that you. Can, I don't know if you can see. You can see there's a little hole. So this hole is uh, super important. Is to avoid to have like a pressure inside of the of the bottle because with the pump it will just pump the liquid and it will create like a, um, a vacuum inside. It's gonna be harder for the, the pump to to uh, just pump out the liquid. So make sure you have a little hole. It can be any size. The only uh, restriction is to make sure that the, the pressure is always equal. So make sure that it's not covered. You can make sometimes like a bigger hole uh, compared to this if you want to make sure because if like there's like a salt creep or anything, um, the, the small one will just like be covered. But I keep myself clean, so it's not a, an issue for, my, for me. When you, you go to the grocery store, you can find like this kind of stuff. So it's like made in the, in glass, but the caps is in plastic. So this, I think, is like the one of like the perfect combination. So before I, con I continue, I just want to uh, make a special mention um, from some of the bottle. Like you've seen in the past, like in the AKA, you have like this kind of bottle, like it looks super cool. And however, like the, the caps is made in uh, cork. And the cork is usually spread with the anti fungus, which is make like a, it's, it can be like toxic for your aquarium. So I will say, like, if you can avoid uh, the cork, uh, just avoid it. If you can't, like, just make sure like you don't like shake the bottle and the, the liquid will just like mix with the, in contact with the cork. So just like by precaution, so just something I avoid. And sometimes like you buy like a big bottle of uh, liquid like this and one of the tricks like you can make like the, the hole directly uh, on the, the caps and uh, this is like one special trick that I like like you just use directly the product uh, and make the hole this is like a HDPE so it's, it's safe to use and one of like the perfect thing I think any company should do is like a liberty you have like the box they have like um, the caps you can just cut, uh, cut that, that part and you just plug directly uh, the, your air tubing or... Alright, so after finding like the perfect bottle for you uh, it's time to make the, the connection uh, from the caps with a tube to your dosing pump so my preference is like I said I prefer the glass and having like a, a plastic caps like that uh, which you can, you can make the hole and this kind of stuff you actually can just remove and uh, so it's time like to, to make the hole so this there is a different um, option to make the hole um, and please don't laugh what, what I'm going to show because I tried 
Um, so one of the first options, like have a drill. Um, and like I like like big big stuff like that. Um, so I, I tried to use like uh, this needle uh, like this and make like the hole. Uh, it wasn't like a, the like the perfect option, but it's one option for you. Another thing, like I tried to use this kind of stuff. Um, uh, it was <laughs> that was like the worst option to make the hole in the metal caps. It was just painful. And that thing is like it's like super huge. So, but if you have this and you don't have anything else, well, okay. Um, after that, like you, you use, can use like a Dremel if you have one. It can use the, the tips like that uh, that you make with the hole, and just try to go around the, it with those kind of uh, needles. They are like a drill step, I think they are called. And you can choose uh, the 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 opening of the hole. Personally, what I do is like I just make a, a little hole. Then after this, I'm just going to to test if the the tube or whatever that I'm going to put inside uh, fit. And if it doesn't fit, I drill just a little bit more like a uh, wider until uh, it, it fit perfectly. My favorite tool between everything I use this uh, kind of stuff it's a uh, hole opener um, I don't know what's exactly the name but like I'm a manual guy I like to be uh, more uh, more close to myself and work my way out um, and this thing looks like the perfect tool so I recommend this like honestly it's like super cheap it's like five bucks only yeah, I'm gonna show a demonstration on how uh, to make the hole the first thing uh, you're gonna do is like just to make little mark in the center of the cap and uh, I'm gonna switch the camera so my goal is actually to put uh, that tube in that cap so I'm gonna make a hole that is like a big enough to, to pass through so it's so useful that thing I really enjoyed it you can see like how easy it is because I don't need I don't think I need like to accelerate the video because it's so quick to do and voila just like a Give a first try, does it fit? Nope. So I just keep going. I try, see? And it's really tight, that's why I like it. It's like it's super tight. So uh, you could just go like this and use like um, some air tubing. So you just cover the tube with the air tube, the, the, sorry, the, the rigid tube for uh, with the air tube. And you connect uh, this to your dosing pump. So this is like a, just one way to make uh, the, the hole. Uh, I think it's like the most uh, easy uh, way to do it. So one thing I did is like I bought uh, this kind of stuff. It's called a Warburg grommet. And uh, inside you have all, all the size for, for the tubing. And I think this is the one. So what I did is I just put that just in between. So you can see there's like a little gap. Uh, and you put it just uh, in between. I'm gonna show you an example. Like this is was my see, my uh, my dosing bottle uh, previously, and you can see I feel like it, it was just uh, tighter sometimes because it's, uh, what kind of happened like the, the the hole that you made is a little bit wide and uh, it goes uh, a little bit loose. So um, what I did, I just put a, a grommet, and uh, it was. Yeah, honestly, I didn't have ever any issue with that, um, and uh, it worked perfectly. So this is like the cheapest way uh, to make your dosing bottle connection. So this was like a, just uh, one of the options. Um, the other option that you can do is uh, if you want to connect with the arrow back head like this, uh, push connect, I think it's called. Um, what's happening is like if you have like another cat, uh, that thing is like it's not it's not big enough um, and you have to step up to a drill a big drill like this yeah don't laugh at me so uh, i just use that and i just drill inside of it and uh, so i just enlarge a little bit more the, the hole and uh, what after you do you just insert the bulkhead put that one insert like this uh, those blue thing over there uh, they are just like a to lock Let's say, uh, but like if you connect like a, this kind of uh, tube, it's like a one one quarter uh, outside a uh, Audi. So just like so, 
intelligence connect like that. Um, and then after that, you can connect to your like uh, let's say like your, depending of your system, you can use like arrow um, tube like this and connect over there, and you have like your connection. So this is the idea. And by the way, you can if you want to remove those little uh, blue pin. They are just there to uh, to lock uh, the stuff. So if you press, it won't like uh, go away. And if I just put the lock, so if I try to like remove that thing, like I can't. So it's, it's just one little uh, safety uh, thing. Honestly, you can't remove them. It's like it's not really necessary. Um, and uh, after this, honestly, you're pretty much done. So one of the things like a, a kind of tool like I like to use uh, to cut the, the tube like this, I use this uh, scissor cutter. One of the options, so you have like the, the or connect like this you have the rabbit gummer or the direct tube like this uh, another option is like to use the John guest so the goal of this is uh, if you have let's say maybe this you connect like this and if you use like air tubing you can after this you can after this like just insert inside of it and make sure that the holes over there is uh, the 5 uh, 516 dimension uh, outside and uh, so that's like three options that you can uh, you can do and and voila so you just made your own uh, dosing bottle uh, and that's pretty much the video so i hope all the whole video was like super useful for you uh, if i forget something just let me know in the comments below and please uh, leave me a like uh, if you find this video like useful for you I'm trying to like swim in between the, the shark and my little fish in the YouTube community. So uh, <laughs> give me a like if you can. And oh, I almost forgot this little thing. Uh, you can also have the, the direct tube like this. Uh, unfortunately, I think I just, uh, uh, I think uh, I can't remove the, the John Guest over there. Um, but I, if I can found, find this on Amazon, I'll just uh, give a link. But uh, your best bet best bet honestly is gonna be like those kind of stuff uh, most of the people use use this so that's it for me and thank you for watching bye bye what a second <laughs> during all this time it was just over there oh.